right, good day and uh, welcome to Gaming with the Colonel. I'm Sean Moran and today I'm going to talk a little bit about <clears throat> Squad Leader. Uh, not the overall game, just a specific scenario. I guess I just had an itch to play some tactical war games uh, as of late, so what I did is I pulled out the old Squad Leader and uh, went through some of the scenarios and I settled on uh, Crescendo of Doom, uh, the Battle of Warta Line, which is... Um, Essentially, a, a, a setup where the Polish are on the defense, uh, obviously September 39. Uh, and in this particular case, the, uh, this, this scenario it had the elements of the SS Liebstandard uh, Regiment attacking, uh, with the Polish uh, having uh, you know, a defensive position with some wire and some entrenchments and, and a little bit of light arms, nothing more than that. Um, so I, there is so much to talk about Squad Leader. Um, I particularly got introduced to it when I was a teenager. Uh, a friend of mine, his father was big into these games. We played some Panzer Leader and things like that, and, and Squad Leader was one of the big ones on the table. And we used to, I remember spending weekends at his house and we would have a massive board set up and <clears throat> we'd do whole, you know, massive campaigns, even anything where he'd, he'd make a, a mock sort of, uh, D-Day sort of inland sort of scenario and, and his dad would always be the Germans and we'd always be the Allies advancing and that sort of thing. So so over the years, you know, from when I was a teenager, um, I picked up the Crescendo of Doom and, and obviously Cross of Iron before that. Um, it's still pretty much the granddaddy of all tactical war games, right? Uh, I have not played any new uh, tactical war games um, such as, what is it, the Worthington Texas Arrows or Band of Brothers series, uh, and I believe Academy Games has their um, Ravaging the Bear and that sort of thing. I have not played any of those, but uh, perhaps I will uh, one day. I'll probably get the uh, uh, Columbia Games, their Combat Infantry uh, game. That looks kind of fun, so, so we'll see about that. Okay, so what do I, what do I have sort of set up here? Um, Let's do a pause. I'll, actually, before we do that, I just want to show you the condition of my very loved games. Um, so obviously we've got the, the uh, what do they call this? This is the module or the game. What, are, what is it? The Crescendo Doom. Basically, it's, the, it's an add-on is what we'll call it. But you can see I've still got some packing tape on these things. And my squad leader barely closes because of all the counters. So I... I probably should do something with that, but I have not. And then over here I've got, uh, again, Cross of Iron, looking a little weathered, a little bit of packing tape, and I actually I had to pull out the whole, uh, you know, Squad Leader, Cross of Iron, Crescendo of Doom, and you can see my, my Squad Leader. In fact, it's not even, this is Cross of Iron here, Squad Leader's here, but this is the back of my Squad Leader. It actually needs to be taped up or restapled. And I was able to pull out the the um, uh, the Crescendo of Doom uh, you know, Player's Aid, or they call it Quick Reference Data Data Card. With uh, you know, you'll find the Infantry Fire Table uh, armor to hit uh, tables and that sort of thing, <clears throat> and all the other information that you find. It really built built up over time, obviously with Squad Leader. You know, that, where they added all those rules and. I have not played Advanced Squad Leader. I might get the, um, what do they call that? The quick. They've got a not a the introduction uh, to it. I might I might try that. But as we've heard before, that it's like a a way of life, and I'm not sure if I want to jump into that. I think I'm just happy to to when I want a tactical sort of <clears throat> setting to jump back to the old Squad Leader days and, and check that out because there's so much. Uh, so much I think that that game, this game still has to offer. Okay, so I'm going to pause and we're going to zoom in a bit on the map. I'll tell you what happened uh, and we'll go from there. Thanks. Okay, so this involved boards uh, 5 and 3 from the Squad Leader series. Uh, board 5, I think, came from uh, Cross of Iron, I think. I can't remember now. Um, <clears throat> so the Polish had, had some wire obstacles and and some entrenchments. And I sort of... I, I did a sort of sporadic thing because, you know, I'm, I'm playing by myself. I kind of knew where I was going to bring in the, the, the SS, but I <clears throat> I decided, uh, you know, if I'm the Polish, I'd probably 
defend uh, this road, this road, and there was a high feeder over here that I actually put the pillbox up on. Maybe that was a mistake, but whatever. And I had a few squads over here on the right. You can't really see them just outside the, the camera frame with some wire obstacles. And then really what I did is I brought the SS down this road, and I brought another small element down this road as well. <clears throat> now, the, the victory conditions were that the SS had to get eight squads off of um, the the uh, what is that going to be the eastern board is what they had to do now um, <clears throat> that sounds pretty easy uh, <laughs> I'll say right this way that the Polish won I got to basically turn four and I was kind of surprised um, and you can see that the you know the the Germans had 15 squads and I had to get eight across and I lost that many that I that I, that I Obviously, he'd made some mistakes. They had a couple of Mark Mark II's here tanks, which really, really didn't do much. They only had, you know, basically an eight-factor machine gun on them. Um, they had some artillery, which was interesting to read through those rules again. And they had this infantry gun, which really never even came into play. And what did the Polish have? The Pol so the Polish had 13 squads. They had a couple of machine guns. They had these anti-tank rifles. They had their own module of artillery. And then, really, they had the wire, and uh, you know, and, and that sort of thing. And they had those... Um, what are those question mark counters called? I, I can't remember, but they had those counters that to sort of hide their setup, which when you're playing by yourself, that doesn't really mean anything, right? But uh, it never really came into play because I, I I opened fire with those guys um, sooner rather than later so I could take advantage of that, you know, minus two of the, of the Germans moving in the open. So, <clears throat> anyways, I decided to barrel down here with the Germans, and uh, it's, it's interesting. I, I forgot the... Well, it's not called the requirement, but the, you know, you have to you have to dig into the rules. I, I am pretty confident with the base squad leader rules, but when you've got to start looking at the different rules that got added for the different, uh, you know, modules, let's call them, or add-ons, you know, you do have to be pretty savvy in moving back and forth of that. And and I was, you know, I had to go from crescendo doom cross of iron uh, back to squad leader, um, but that's fine. You know, I uh, that doesn't that doesn't bother me. I'm I'm happy to do that, but. So I barreled down here with the tanks, and I hit wire right away, and I had to look it up. What I didn't realize is that the, the tanks can hit wire, move off of them, and, and the wire is destroyed. Um, or, or if uh, squads are going to jump on the wire, they can move off, but they have to roll a die, and that costs them that many movement points to move off the wire. Or they can stay on, and their next prep fire phase, they can roll their inherent firepower. In this case, the, the SS were uh, six. So they could roll a six um, or under uh, with a leadership modifier, and they could destroy the wire. So <clears throat> I barreled down here on the left with the, the tanks and most of the infantry. Uh, I immediately got into a, a close combat, I think, on the, the first turn. And the, the SS, you know, the, the Polish were just sort of no match when he got into those, those close combat you know, phases. Um, uh, I mean, I, I won't go into the details of close combat, but it, essentially it's you're, you're adding up your factors doing a ratio and, and making a roll um, and it's simultaneous so the, the the Polish get to do it and attack anyways and usually I just try to take out a leader you know to, to get something because it's hard with those with those odds and then I barreled down here and I had a an entrenchment with the the Polish here um, I went around them and flanked them and 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 hit them with those SS um, again into their close combat now so where where are things? Oh, the other thing I did is that there's a gully feature over here. I got the SS into some some gullies and and moved them down it because it kept them away from <clears throat> what was up here, which was in a medium machine gun, which basically had you know clear line of sight of this whole whole area. <clears throat> so <laughs> where things went awry is that <laughs> that machine gun and a couple of good rolls from um, uh, the Polish, uh, I believe, over here. I just started to lose too many squads, and I, I got a little bit too daring, and I, I rushed, you know, I think it was two or three SS squads down this road, and, and this medium machine gun up here, it was firing um, <clears throat> the medium machine gun and the squad factor half because of the range, and a six uh, on the on an eight table or a six table or something like that with minus two, I, like I, I rolled like a four, I couldn't believe it, so it was a, it was a KIA. And and that kind of did it. So nothing really happened over here on the on the, this side of the map. I the uh, because the the 
the Germans decided not to even go that way. So I get, I just kept mucking around trying to get these guys out of here. I brought up a German tank to sort of, sort of, um, I don't know, hold them off or irritate them, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, so, so really, that that that's what happened. There's not much more to say. A couple of things I will say though about um, things I learned going back into this game now, all these sort of years later, and I, I should say. Uh, did I play this last year? I think last year I played Guards Counterattack because because why not? That's just kind of a fun one. And my son and I played Guards Counterattack a few years ago, and he seemed to like it. He thought it was all right. But anyways, <clears throat> things that I did uh, sort of relearn um, or noticed: um, anti tank rifles. They're kind of useless <laughs> unless unless you're firing at the side or the back of a. Uh, uh, half track or something like that. Even with the Mark IIs, unless I missed a rule here, I was needing to get snake eyes or in some cases even a frontal shot on a Mark II, I wasn't doing anything uh, with it. And, I, and that's even after looking at the fact that and reading the rules where it says it's you have to, at a lesser range, uh, what do they call it? It's a 40 millimeter or less, you get you know X number of modifiers and that sort of thing. And and it really, when it came down to it, you know, it's got a, the ATR's got a, you can see it there, minus, uh, on that column, sort of uh, second in from the right. You know, it's uh, zero, one, three for unarmored. Unless I'm missing something here, you know, maybe I missed a rule, but it, it seemed to me that it, I wasn't doing anything. It, you could do a deliberate immobilization, but uh, that seems like a pretty hard rule as well, too. So... The ATRs were really going to be kind of useless in this game. This is really going to come down to whatever the poles were going to do in terms of close combat or some <clears throat> some open shots. The other thing that I that I that I learned um, was sort of the newer, and I probably played them before, so I don't know if I learned it. I just probably remembered it. Um, they they modified the artillery rules for. Um, I want to make sure I get this right. Maybe they did this in Crossfire, maybe they did in Crescent or Doom. Like before with just squad leader, straight squad leader, you rolled for radio contact. You put down an artillery request. And that's what I was doing over here. I kept, I kept the Germans kept putting a, an artillery request and I couldn't, I just used some American one because I couldn't find the German coloring for that. Um, you roll for, you know, roll for radio contact, put the artillery request down. Once you get into... I think it's a close combat phase. You roll, you know, one or a two. It, it's accurate uh, for uh, the Germans and for Russians or Poles or anybody else. It's you got to roll a one. And if you don't roll a, a one, you know, a one or a two, then you then you roll again and, and figure out what using this as a one to six. Where did it fall? And then another die to go. How far away did it fall? So the 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 error. How far away did it miss its mark? Right. So in the old rules, you could move it three immediately and do a fire for effect. Um, and in these rules, they said that if you you could move it up to 18 hexes, but then you had to roll for, provided you could still see it, but then you had to roll again for, for to make sure you're maintaining contact, and and then you could, you know, bring it in on the following prep fire phase, um, or... Um, or, or keep it as a, a you know a spotting round because that's what happens is the when you flip over the artillery request it becomes a, a blue spotting round and then you can change that to a <clears throat> red spotting round when you're moving things around and then finally do a fire for effect okay that's fine uh, I don't know what the new advanced squad leader rules are like I, I I'm actually an advanced mortarman I've called in you know a, a mortar fire even some artillery fire not now, I haven't done that in a billion years, but, you know, back in the day, I could do it. I was okay at it. Uh, I just kind of think that the original rules are were fine in terms of artillery, because once you had a, a round come in and you saw it, you know, losing contact with your actual, you know, artillery unit, I think that's what that rule was, was trying to do, or your, your mortal platoon, that, that was never going to happen. I mean, it'd be very rare. I mean... So maybe in World War II it was different, you know, maybe, maybe I've got that wrong, but I just kind of think that, you know, rolling for contact again, I just, I just don't think you, you needed to do that. You know, if the, 
the rounds were coming in. If you could see them, you could you could manipulate them if you knew what you were doing. So, anyways, so for future, I may or may not play that way. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But that's just something I noticed with uh, with those rule sets. Okay, uh, let's just have a little bit of an overview of the map again. All right. So in the end, as I said, the the Germans took too many losses. The Polish took a fair amount of losses, but they actually, you know, fought hard and, and did what they were supposed to and stopped the uh, the SS from getting getting across. And I, I probably shouldn't have done it, you know, the way I did it. I probably should have been a little bit more cautious and not not flamboyant and thinking the rush or the uh, the Germans rather were were invincible because, I mean, the SS in this game do have some pretty great characteristics. I mean, they they've got a, a morale value of eight. When they break, they then rally at a nine or under. You know, and they can rally themselves too. So, although in this scenario, I don't think they those factors came into play. I think they, they said the the special rules for the SS didn't didn't uh, apply. But still, you know, nine or under to rally. That's 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 pretty good. I had to refamiliarize myself with some of the desperation morale, which I'd forgotten about. Which is, if you're broken and you get fired upon during that turn, the next time when you're trying to rally, you've got to reduce your morale by four to uh, in order to rally, which is pretty significant, which means, you know, if you break units and you take another shot at them, it's going to be pretty tough for them to, to rally again, you know, so, anyways, so, <clears throat> classic, still a fun game to play, um, I really should probably dig into the counters and get them better organized, because it is still a bit of a slog to, I've got little baggies and that sort of thing to, you know, uh, organize them, but I don't have trays, um, fun game, I think I'll still come back to it try some of the other scenarios. I picked this one because it was going to fit on the board easily. And Oh, there, here's the other reason why I picked this. Uh, I've got a buddy of mine. We play uh, Steel Panthers, I mean, a biometrics game online. We've been playing it for probably 20 years, all the different iterations. Um, it's free to download. And and we get into kicks where we go into different flavors. And I just started to, I needed some ideas. So I pulled out my squad leader and I pulled out this one. And I said, let's give this one a shot. So I basically tried to make this on Steel Panthers. And then I thought, you know, forget it. Why don't I just play it anyways for fun at the same time? Uh, and the Steel Panthers ones, the Polish lost. <laughs> but, but in this one, they they won. At least I think they lost. I can't remember. We play so much, it's it's uh, it's a bit of a blur. Okay, so I got nothing else to say about this game. Um, I uh, did get um, Sam Grant for Christmas uh, by Columbia Games. I got that upstairs right now, uh, and I'm enjoying it. I, I, I'm going to finish playing that and probably set it up again, and then I'll do a video on it in the future. And I also picked up um, Stalingrad 1942 from GMT, uh, Mark Simonich. And I've, I've opened up that, and wow, I'm really lo looking forward to that. It's a it's a bigger game. I think I might, I think I see it more of maybe it's a classic war game, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to get that Panzer Creek feel from it, but you know, only better because it's it's going to be so so much more, I guess, modern in terms of uh, rules and the, the counters and that sort of thing. The map is huge, though. I'm not even sure if I can. I won't be able to set up the full map anymore, but. I'll have to figure that out. Maybe I'll need a piece of ply plywood or something like that, but we'll see. Anyways, that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Please uh, like, subscribe, uh, give me some comments. Uh, when's the last time you played Squad Leader? Um, I'd be interested to hear. Take care. Talk again soon.